2021 and now May. And I'm still rocking the baggy shirt, cozy socks, and dorky sweater look. A few months ago, I hosted a t-shirt flipping design competition on my Instagram in which you all had the chance to participate by submitting your designs. I need your help designing a t-shirt. I'm trying to transform this regular t-shirt that I have and incorporate some of this 3D printed tool onto it to make it a new and more blousey design. So the competition consisted of taking a white or a black t-shirt and flipping it into something else using this 3D printed tool. All of the shirts are kind of following this black and white theme. It would be cool to have them like as a collection of black and white. There were so many great designs that I chose to make more than just the winning design. So if you submitted a design for this competition, you will be seeing at least one of the ones you submitted in this video. This shirt. It's a really the most simple of all of the designs. Very easy to make. I kept this one really simple by just making some rectangles that I later stitched together in the shape of the bow. If you're just starting out with 3D printing and 3D modeling and you're looking to recreate any of these, I think this one is a good one to try out. It's a pretty simple yet super cute design that can be dressed up with like a skirt or can be worn with a fairly casual outfit like some jeans. So this shirt, it's kind of half a, the white t-shirt, half the black t-shirt, and then it has like these puff sleeves. To start off this shirt, I took both a white and a black t-shirt and marked them down the middle. I then added some seam allowance to both of the shirts and cut them and sewed them together. In this particular case, the sleeves I drew up were the exact sleeves that the shirt had, so in order to make them puffy, I looked up some patterns online for puffy sleeves and those were the ones that I was tracing and I think that's what led me to my demise. Something and it's that the sleeve that I'm making that I thought would have a bunch of more area to gather is basically the same size as the sleeve I cut out. Therefore, it's gonna fit perfectly and it's not gonna bunch up the way we want it to, so. It took me three times to get these right because they were just not puffy enough. I felt that they just needed a little bit more of the 3D printed fabric. So instead of scrapping the entire sleeve, I just cut them down the middle and added a few more of those middle patterns that I had printed and stitched them up again with a 3D pen. To create the gather, I would use the long stitch in my sewing machine and then just pull on the strings on one side to gather the sleeve. And also I sewed like a little channel in the bottom for the elastic and voila! Le puff. I mean, it could be puffier and it could also be longer so that it reaches like lower in the arm. After all that struggle, I'm pretty satisfied with how they came out. The designer also added like this little detail of having some text in the bottom of the shirt. My first intention was to have this 3D printed onto the shirt directly, but I saw some videos on YouTube and I kind of got convinced it's something that I should try maybe for another video. Because it is kind of a struggle depending on the material of the shirt for like the filament to stick and you have to use maybe like transfer paper and, and ironing and, and even stretch. And I didn't know how it was gonna come out and I was already way overdue on this video. So I just glued it using the hard to bond plastics glue that I usually use. I put some masking tape on the back of the shirt, put the accelerator on the letters, then the glue on the letters and just transferred it directly onto the shirt. Usually I don't wear my shirts on tuck and figured the name would not be visible so I sort of transferred it up top here. Overall, I'm really happy with this shirt. Okay, this is something regarding the overall process for all of these shirts. Let me explain how I handled every single shirt from this point on. I would take the shirt, make it fit the way I wanted to, cut out the piece that was supposed to be 3D printed, measured it, took a picture of it, then scaled it up in my CAD software. Then I would divide it into pieces to make sure they would fit inside the bed of my printer. And voila! the 3D printed parts. So to not be repeating this throughout the video, I'm just gonna call this method strategy uh, Fiku cap. So it's like fit, cut, CAD, print. Fiku cap. That way when I show you the rest of the shirts, I won't repeat myself and I'll just say I Fiku cap those pieces. For every single thing I 3D printed in this video, I used method number two from my five ways to 3D print fabric video, which I'll link down in the description or on the top if I can figure out how to do that. It's the infill method and I'm using both the gyroid and the um, cubic subdivision infill patterns at different percentages, some at 10, some at 50, depending on how see-through I wanted those garments to be. 
This one could also be a super good one for you guys to recreate. The sleeves, I fiku capped them and put them together using a 3D pen on that seam and on the bottom seam. And I added like that little detail that I did to my sweater in my sweater video. It's just like a little brim detail so that it looks like sleeve-ish and pocket-ish. And after that, I sewed the pocket to the t-shirt and sort of placed it where I liked it. And I sewed the sleeves as well. This one could also be a super good one to recreate and it could even work as menswear. You know, anyone can pretty much wear this shirt. Okay, so this is a shirt with the geometric pattern torso. I took the shirt and I fiku capped um, all of the pieces on the torso. I put them together using a 3D pen and sewed them onto the shirt using a zigzag stitch so that it stays pretty stretchy. As I was making this one, I had some fit issues with the sleeve since it, it ended up being a little smaller than the hole I had left in the front and back pieces of the shirt. So I just took in where I had to, but in the end I made it work. I did not take into account how big my head was going to be and how I was gonna get it on and off. That seems to be like a recurring theme um, with things that I make. Overall, I think it looks pretty cool. The seams are parallel to the geometric pattern and they sort of become part of the design. It feels like a modern take on lace, which I really like. So this is the athletic attempt ruffle top. This one is also pretty simple. I just printed out a couple of rectangular pieces, fused them with a 3D pen. Looks with just one seam. And now I'm gonna put the strands here on the sides and seal it up here on top in order to make the pull strings. And it's supposed to like bunch up like this and ruffle a little bit. Um, I sewed the ruffle down the middle, then I put the filament on one side, looped it over here on top, brought it back down and sewed on both sides of the filament, sort of trapping it on there. And that's what's giving it the opportunity to sort of ruffle up and ruffle up and zhuzh this way. I think it looks fairly athletic while still being sort of stylish. I think the original design had the ruffles in black, but I felt keeping it all white would give it more of that athletic feel that also worked better for the summer as being like light and fresh top. It's kind of a crop shirt that becomes croppier when you zhuzh it. I actually wasn't sure if it was gonna zhuzh the way I thought it was. Another look that I can give to this shirt like with this ruffled gathered detail on top and then it just sort of falling in the bottom and I could tie like a little knot here. So there's different looks and ways to wear this and I think that makes it pretty cool. This shirt is another one that ended up being pretty simple. I just drew up the shapes that I wanted. I fiku capped the bottom of the shirt to make sure that the panel that I was drawing up was the right size. Um, the original design had some text that read art on the sleeves, but for some reason the way that text in that font was built, um, it was just not printing right. So I sort of stuck to the consistent 3D style reading on the bottom and on the sleeves. The sleeves and the bottom, I all based on measurements that I took and sort of ballparked more or less how wide I wanted those pieces. And then I sewed them to the shirt using a, zig a white zigzag stitch. This was a super cool design and the bold white letters on the black t-shirt kind of emanates like streetwear vibes. Very cool and um, very fashion forward. So this is the shirt that I've really been delaying on making. Partly because it's the most difficult and it's also the one that you guys like the most. It's the winning shirt and I just really don't want to disappoint. So I want to make sure that I do it right and that it looks nice and that the person that wanted it likes it and is satisfied that their design came through, their design vision. So this is the final and winning shirt. I'm sending this to an actual person after I'm finished making it. For switching that crew neck into a v-neck, I saw this YouTube video and I'll link it in the description in case you guys want to follow along. Um, but it was super help helpful. To make the bell sleeves, I actually took the same cutout of, of the shirt and cut slits into it before I actually took a picture of it. It. Therefore, I had the overall shape and also the overall profile of the sleeve and then scaled it and then printed. This worked out like much better. I didn't have to redo these at all and they still look like the bell sleeves that the person wanted. They have some movement and at the same time, they sort of sit 
like wings like that and I think that's kind of cool it makes it look pretty modern and very girly the peplum was a mess just took like the basic measurement of the bottom and like added three inches so it was like a little trapezoid of a pattern it was weird I mean the person is smaller than me so I figured it would be okay to go a bit smaller just fit me like super fitted it looked super awkward and weird it had no flow at all this is not what a peplum is supposed to look like and I didn't want to scrap all the panels that I had already created so I just opted for the option of taking some failed panels like some failed prints of panels and like adding these triangles in um, I'd seen that strategy in other dresses that where they added like colorful triangles inside it and it was like part of the design so I felt like that was a better option to like not be so wasteful of the filament and it looks pretty cool it's still not perfect I mean it, it does have like some raw seams and raw seams in the bottom and everything but it's actually flowing now so that's I'll call that success um, I also created like this little waistband of the remaining t-shirt fabric that I had which I feel also ties in like that girly like wraparound dress wraparound shirt kind of look with the peplum I also struggled to try it on the waist was so tight and I did not zigzag stitch it I just like straight stitched it so when I was trying it on it was really hard to get over my shoulders so I had to go back and like unsew the entire waistband and do a zigzag stitch and that's what seemed to work zigzag stitch for the win. The original design has these buttons down the middle and I wasn't sure if I should make them like operable buttons or just decorative buttons and if I made them operable buttons then I would have to account for like seam allowance to make that part sort of thicker so that I had somewhere to sort of fold over and have a finished edge. Um, the only video that I sort of got convinced that I could do um, on turning a crew neck into a v-neck was one that did it using the ribbon um, fabric of the collar. I was confused on how that would look with the buttons and how it was sort of tying together and in the end I opted for not having the buttons. I'm pretty pleased with the overall designs but I truly struggled with pretty much all of them. I showed some of my struggles here. I'm not a pattern or sewing expert, so most of these things I'm just winging as I go, but I really like making stuff. So if you have any ideas of content that you would like to see from me, feel free to leave me a comment. Yeah, thanks for watching.